As I understand it, if there is a channel behind every system of divination, then in order to make a correct diagnosis within a particular system of divination, such as tarot, you have to acquire the right to that channel and not just read the card meanings on the internet. But how can the right to the channel be acquired? And what channel stands behind such a tool of divination as the pendulum? Is it possible to make a diagnosis using a pendulum when you are under the Christian egregore? Thank you very much. When we talk about this matter and look for an answer to this question, we have to take into account the rule that we are going to apply today, which is to reject the binary principle. And that means that we have to somehow correct all the specifics that tell us where we can use a pendulum and where we cannot, where we can use tarot and where we cannot, where we can use runes and where we cannot. Here we can say with a high degree of probability that the tarot will work perfectly well on the Abrahamic channels, firstly because it was created on these channels and therefore carries in itself, in its base, a little bit of the parent structure that we cannot bypass, ignore or overcome and that we have to reckon with. Tarot will most likely work with a consciousness structured according to the Abrahamic pattern. There are six Abrahamic channels, Judaism, Christianity, Abrahamic systems, Partly Zoroastrianism, Manichaeism, and, what I've forgotten to mention, Islam. And all six Abrahamic channels interact well with tarot cards in one way or another. It's just that there are certain religious prohibitions. But again, these prohibitions are not for everyone. For some people, these prohibitions are total and complete, for others, they are partial. Can we say definitively that on this channel all Christians, for example, can't work with tarot cards, can't work with a pendulum, can't work with anything else? No, of course not. It's just that some people have more access to the informational channel, some people have less access. It's just that there are certain rules. In Christianity, these rules related to the performance of some sort of ritual action before the reading of information. After all, what is a tool of divination? It's a tool for reading information. And in fact, it's your mind that reads it. It's your mind that receives some codes that it decodes through its own consciousness, through its own core, where this decoder is either there or not. When you're working on a channel, you get this packet of information, this option, this utility, from that channel. You also get information from that channel and you decode it according to what is convenient for that channel. For example, if you work in the system of Zoroastrianism, let's say the same Avestan astrology, the Avestan system of duality, because that's where it comes from, then of course in that sense it will be more convenient for you to use the pendulum, simply because it reflects your system of duality, the system of your channel, as accurately as possible. There is only yes or no, no maybe. There is only black or white. No nuances, no shades. There are only sinners and saints. That is, everything is very clear there. There is a will of God, and all the rest is excessive sophistication that only causes headaches. That is why this tool is more suitable for this kind of system. The same goes for tarot cards. They have a very clear meaning and do not require any additional interpretation unless you practice mysticism. But in order for you to be allowed to do mystical processing of information, you need to have a certain built-in utility. So again, your channel has to give you a certain level of access, and the same goes for the runes. Because you must pass the runes through yourself, implement them into your consciousness. The decoding program will be formed, packaged and built into your consciousness. This process will take place within you, it won't happen outside of you. And only when you have passed all the runes through yourself will you begin to understand them. Each channel has its own requirements, but they are ambiguous. 
They say, in your case, if you want to receive information through our channel, it's better to have an option that decodes that information in a certain way. Well, it's like if you get some information that's decoded in the sexagesimal system, for example, and you have to convert it to the decimal system. If you don't have that option, of course you're going to make mistakes. You will get wrong information, complete abracadabra, some not quite accurate descriptions of what is happening, something like the prophecies of Nostradamus, something very beautiful, incredibly wise, but which rarely seems to describe events accurately. So when a person chooses a tool for divination, he must first listen to himself. He has certain preferences, and he has to satisfy them. He knows which channel he's working on, and he understands that the channel also has certain preferences at that moment. For example, it would be a bad idea to work with runes on a Christian channel. The channel will build a decoding utility into your consciousness and will read the runes through this utility. The runes will tell you one meaning and your channel will decode them into a completely different meaning that is appropriate for the channel. It's not a big deal, but it can cause conflict. Because runes, like any other divination system, contain the basic information of their origin, and when that basic information comes into conflict with information from a completely different, diametrically opposed, hostile channel, that war will take place in your consciousness, and it is not quite good. Usually the channel itself gives you the right tool, it just falls into your hands, it comes out of nowhere. The diviners from God, who are really from God, who work on the channel, they don't need any tool at all, they can predict the future by anything, like the ancient augurs, by the flight of birds, by the entrails of animals, by fallen stones, by the blowing wind, by the rustling of leaves, by the signs of nature, by worn shoes, by anything. In fact, you can just set yourself a goal, ask a question, and then you get the signs, which you decipher correctly, because you have this built-in utility, a long time ago, Apollo punished poor Cassandra, and as a result, no one believed her prophecies. And why did this happen? Because she had a utility to make true prophecies, but Apollo punished her and built in one more additional program. So she decoded the information correctly, but that information was not perceived by others. It was not perceived at all. Something like that happens when you work on the channel, on a certain dedicated channel. The channel will always give you information. But if you have chosen the wrong tool, you run the risk of not being able to successfully decode these messages because the tool itself is not compatible with the utility and the information cannot be unpacked. This very vast subject that we're exploring can basically lead us to a simple understanding. First of all, use your common sense. Know the nature of your God's channel. Know the prohibitions He places. Because there are many channels that say what is allowed and what is not. Secondly, listen to yourself, because a lot depends on your desire to touch and make contact with this tool of divination. And of course, look at your results. The more you work with the tools of divination, the more you develop the skill. When practitioners start, they don't really know which tool is right for them, they just take different tools and apply them to the channel to see if it fits, if it doesn't fit, if it talks, if it doesn't talk, if it works, if it doesn't work. 
For example, there are channels that work perfectly well with tarot cards, but hate gypsy cards, even though they are generally a daughter of tarot. Why is that? Because tarot works with global meanings, and gypsy cards work with situations that have already been created by the egregores that have been formed. And if you have a powerful enough high channel, it will consider that somewhat inappropriate and incorrect. It's as if you were writing a letter to a royalty, for example, and instead of using paper with emblems and watermarks, you tore it out of a grid notebook and wrote on it. Of course you can do that, but it will be the first and last letter you write to that person. There are certain rules. For example, Christians make excellent use of divination tools. And sometimes they even use tarot cards, despite recommendations to the contrary. But they always work better if they read a prayer before the divination. And this is what they call entering the channel. Some of the scholars I know who work in Christian colleges and religious universities have a course in mythology and a course in pre-Christian beliefs. They also have this rule, and before they start a course and give a lecture in which the names of pagan gods are mentioned, they say prayers so as not to accidentally awaken the inner demons with the vibration of these names. So they begin each lecture, for example on the cult of Apollo or the cult of Dionysus, with the reading of a certain prayer, just to silence their own inner demons, which, from the Christian point of view, everyone has, and which must be fought mercilessly. They pass on the knowledge of these cults, but they do it in this way. The same goes for divination. So to sum up, here we learn by trial and error. There are no clear instructions, it is magic. You have your own consciousness, your own individual channel. This channel connects with your consciousness, with your magical core, and understands which options you need to add, which options you need to remove in order to get more accurate information. And it is from this connection between consciousness and channel that the right tool is chosen. And it serves as a reflection of your working utility. Your built-in utility can use a glass of water, a cup of coffee, scattered bean seeds, tarot cards, it can use anything. It's always very individual. And I repeat, in magic nothing is ever the same for everyone, everything is always very personal and individual, because magic unfolds differently in each consciousness. As for information on the internet about the meaning of tarot cards, well, that's a kind of information too. It's a source of information, you can also read it. But if you practice a long time and a lot, you will eventually get information of a slightly different nature. You will receive information from your force, from your channel, that explains the nuances, explains the facets, explains some of the peculiarities that are hidden from the eyes of ordinary people. The perception, interpretation, and meaning of the major and minor arcana will take on a slightly personal, individual character. But that doesn't mean that some other interpretation given by some other master, known or unknown, written in some book or on the internet, is wrong. Not at all. It's just that everyone looks at reality from their own point of view, from their own side, from their own perspective, you look from yours, they look from theirs. And different points of view always show different angles. No one can say that someone else's point of view is wrong. It's not perfect, but it's true for absolutely everyone. Because the human mind can't grasp the immensity. That's why it can be so useful to work on the channel and not just read information from the surrounding space.